every achievement should be acknowledged. That's the view of Derby County head coach Paul Wall, and that's why Simon Varley, or Sai, as he's known to everyone at Moore Farm, is spending his Monday morning here building the win wall, and Derby will have plenty of opportunities to add to it over the next month. While they don't take the chance at Mansfield in the EFL Trophy, there is a night to remember for on loan forward Lewis Dobby, who scores his first goal in senior football. It's an amazing feeling when you get your first goal, and especially for this club. I think it's very special and it's one I'll remember for the rest of my life. I think they had quite a high line there. I just made eye contact with Hayden. And he's played it in behind and once I'm 1v1 versus the defender, I think I just backed myself against most players. So I'm happy it finally clipped and hopefully this is the start and I can just keep going now and keep getting some more. And Mansfield take the extra point in the eighth round of the shootout. It finishes with a Mansfield victory. Now the victory for Nigel Clough against his former club. In a 46-game league season, the match at home to Port Vale didn't seem too noteworthy when the fixtures were announced. It does now, as Paul Warren takes charge of the Rams at the club's home ground, Pride Park Stadium, for the first time. Left wing back, yeah. So, uh, he's not on the bench <laughs> either, so I would presume uh, illness, injury, whatever. Right? So, that is definitely their second choice left wing back. Uh, but apart from that, everything is the same. I'll give you some more information like I did last week before we go out. Um, but if you're going to go on a good run, these are the f***ing games. You need to grab a grip of them straight away. And really, I think, and, and I'm biased, I know because you're my boys now, but look, you're a f***ing amazing team. I walked off the training pitch yesterday with him smiling, going, f me, this is a good team. But you're only a good team if you're all at it, right? And if there's one weak link, they'll f***ing find it because they're a good team who work their chuff off, right? But just perform. And if they beat you, they have to beat you because they were f***ing outstanding. And if they are outstanding they beat you, I'll be the first one to tell you, right? But you at your best are un beatable You're at home, you're an amazing home side, just f get after them. Don't feel sorry for them, get after them. Play relentlessly, play quick, get it out wide, put crosses in, the usual stuff, and the game will come to you. But if you come out, if you leave this dressing room and come down again, you get your asses f***ed. Because that's what football's like. Agree? Good, right, good luck. A couple of big blocks in there, at least by nine. And here comes Mendes Lang with a break. Shovel the head to Barkhazen. Barkhazen goes on. It's Collins! This season marks the first time in almost 15 years that Derby aren't sharing the same division as their arch rivals, Nottingham Forest. The clubs probably have more in common than they care to admit, and both were shaped by the iconic management duo of Brian Clough and Peter Taylor. But despite the first teams not facing each other this season, that doesn't mean bragging rights still aren't up for grabs. Uh, <laughs> 
get out. Days like these are precious for Derby's new coaching staff. With eight matches in the month of October, time to work with the players is at a premium. There's hard work to be done, but there's some fun to be had too. The major concern ahead of the next game is how to cope without suspended striker James Collins. Yeah, he's a big blow. I mean, obviously, when we came in, uh, James is a player that I've tried to sign on a couple of occasions. He was the one I earmarked on day one, saying that you really enjoy playing for me, we'll create loads of chances. Um, so some of the things I've said are right. He, uh, he has. He scored, obviously, three and two, which is great. And as a striker, when you're in that sort of run of form, it's an amazing feeling. You feel invincible. But unfortunately, that's how football is. If you raise your arm, there's always a consequence. Officially just the second ever meeting between Derby County and this version of Accrington Stanley. That FA Cup win here almost four years ago was Derby's first at this stadium. Uh, their two visits in the 1950s ended in a 2-0 defeat and a goalless draw in November 1956. This is Mendes Lang, off and running again. He's found Asula. Chance for Asula! Takes it emphatically for his first Derby County goal. Convinced he should have a free kick. That Pritton's still coming. A miscommunication between Bird and Barkhazen, and an Accrington man has gone down. And the referee is 
he given the penalty? I think he has. To equalise. Wild Smith says no. Sean McConville's denied, and Derby will feel that justice has been done there. No, they're coming forward again. Worley down the middle, caught by Davis. Might be a decision for the referee here. It's another penalty. And it'll be a yellow card for Curtis Davis. Well, this is absolute chaos. It's McConville against Wild Smith again. And this time, he puts it wide. Wow. Continue to lead by a goal to nil. There's Asula breaking down the middle. Asula for his second. Wow, would you look at that? Accrington missed twice from the penalty spot. And then Will Asula doubles the lead. It's never boring with Derby County. Derby going for back-to-back. -back. Away wins in the league for the first time in over two years. Derby wanted it played back to him. It's Bird instead. Rattles the woodwork. Hardly giving chase. It's Sibley. It's still Louis Sibley. And now Barkazen. And now Derby do seal it. Tom Barkazen made absolutely sure. It's a third Derby goal. And it's a deserved three points for Paul Warren's side. I've said it in every other interview, so I'm not so saying this one, but I think Aki have only lost two at home uh, since 2022. They're, it's a difficult place to come. Today's a day where you feel like you, you know, you took a step in the right direction. Uh, all in all, clean sheet away from home, a win, striker scores a couple. Tom gets a great goal at the end, more than deserved for his efforts. And I said to lads, you know, when you leave the pitch and you've won like that, it, that one minute, two minutes, the whole week's work is worth it. So I hope the fans enjoyed it as the players did, and it's nice when you, you, know, you can feel that unity. So uh, it's an absolute privilege. When I found out I was starting, I was just like, okay, I need to go and prove a point here. Like, this is an opportunity for me, so I need to take it now. Keep my head down, stay focused, and hungry for more. That's it. Derby's involvement in the EFL Trophy to an end. A really good battle, a really good workout for Paul Warren's side tonight. Equalised through David McGoldrick eight minutes before half-time. But two more goals from Borges in the second half means that it's City who live to fight another day. means that Derby will bow out of the competition at the group stage. The games just keep coming. After Tuesday's EFL Trophy defeat to Manchester City, it's back to the league on Friday night and a test away at Portman Road. Bird is able to clear. Trying to play in Jackson. Terrific defending. Mendes Lang, what a recovery that was. It had to be perfect. Half time at Portman Road. Ipswich still. Derby nil. Touch. Oh, it might have been sold short here. It's Jackson. Still a chance. West Burns makes no mistake. 
And despite all that pressure, it's a goal that comes out of nothing. Oh, we can't make another change, remember? Oh, good save from Wildsmith. And then down goes the Ipswich player. McGoldrick has shoveled it out of play for a corner, although the linesman is flagging. And he said penalty. And he saved two in as many matches. Jackson is denied by Wildsmith. Pleased with the efforts, and we've come here to a team that you know took a couple of summers to build. We're not a million miles off. That's probably the best way to put it. And I think if we played at our best tonight, we, we uh, may be even better. Not criticising my captain, and in fairness to him, he's the first one to stick his hand up. So look, mistakes happen in football all the time, but we should still, away from home against anyone, um, make their keeper make more saves than we did. The Derby County Community Trust is a huge part of the Derby County family and has a vital role in supporting people across the city. Now they're getting a permanent space at Pride Park Stadium. We're starting to um, bring the, the backyard back to life really. We're going to call it the Community Hub. Um, it's obviously a space that we're, we're working with the club as part of the family support over the summer. Um, obviously key for it being right at the, uh, at the ground, key to it being central for the community to understand where it is and yeah we're really excited to get it open again. Covid I think brought us even closer together, we've always been really um, blessed to have a great relationship but this is certainly a partnership um, and, and being able to open the doors again and, and, and whilst it won't be open 9 till 5 and, and it's in its previous guise, it's been able to physically open the doors to the community right into the heart of the football club. There's nothing like a night under the lights at Pride Park Stadium. Plenty of clubs are getting to experience it for the first time this season. Tonight is Exeter City's turn to try and frustrate the host. Take and I ain't gonna can lose my shit, I ain't that bad anyway. But it shouldn't take me fucking poking you with a stick at half time to make you run around and tackle, surely to Christ. Should it? I mean, just tell, just tell me straight down the barrel. I'm a big boy, I can fucking take it. I've done it fucking long enough. The second half, the shape definitely helped. And by the way, the back four are excellent, so fucking credit to you, right? And um, But look, your second half performance, I can give you credit for. And in fairness, on another day, a set piece comes off or something, you've got a chance. But I agree, we could have been out there for days and not scored. I can't knock your efforts second half, but first half, it just looked so fing shit. Right, get out of here, you want to hear anything from Right, my phone's on all night. If anyone wants to phone me, call me, do it on the phone. Or tomorrow, but not after two, because I've been in cinema. Right, is that fing fair, by the way? Because, look, for the senior pros in the back, Room, when you fucking retire, you want to have something every season of your life. And if you play like you did first half, you will have all. So I'll leave that with you. With schools in the city on their half-term break, 
Hundreds of young fans queued outside the Derby County mega store for a chance to meet a couple of their Rams heroes. Nah, are you enjoying yourself? Amazing turnout. Yes, uh, it's been a good turnout. Um, I think it's important for us to always give back to the fans, you know, they support us week in, week out. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's amazing how busy it is. Does it sort of bring home how important you guys are to people? Yeah, it does, to be honest. Um, you know, you see you see what it means to people. People, people shaking, you know, they took the time out to come and, come and see us. So, you know, we appreciate it um, and we appreciate their support. Have you signed anything weird today? Um, Probably a few phone cases. Uh, no, I don't think so actually, no. Not, not yet. Yeah, I think it's obviously we we appreciate how much support we get and it's nice for the fans to come out and see, I think, two new signings who obviously came in the summer. Um, so yeah, I think just good all around, good to show that we appreciate that they come out in numbers every week and, and support us through through thick and thin. and. And yeah, just give a little bit of something back. Remember when you first started signing autographs? Uh, no, no, probably. I mean, people don't know who you are when you're 18, 19, 20. They always want the big players. So um, yeah, it's, it is what it is. Going back to the previous question. Yeah. Is that the weirdest thing you've signed so far? <laughs> <laughs> and given given that you've just signed the cone, which is up there for the streets yeah. today, what's, what's the weirdest thing you've ever signed? Have you had anything really strange? Um, someone wanted a scarf on a bear just then, and that was just difficult. That's probably the most difficult thing I've signed because it was about that big. How long when you started your career did you sort of take to get the signature right? Oh, it's definitely got shorter as the years gone on. I think, you know, well, thank God because he's writing his whole name, which takes about 20 minutes each one. Um, whereas mine's, yeah, very easy and just quick to do. I would prefer more rest, but in fairness, I think every league's chaotic. I, I don't think this league's a lot worse. I just think the difference with this league is the, the, the tempo and the, the aggression and the out of possession stuff's a lot greater. So in the championship, you do get opportunities to have a couple of minutes on the ball and they drop in a mid block, whereas League One's not like that. You watch the, the strikers who play for Bristol Rovers, if we play it across the back line, they're coming for you all the time. And that's why I think the difference is it's not so much the, uh, uh, the amount of games, it's the intensity within the games, which is the problem. Following the frustration of the goalless draw with Exeter City, Joey Barton's Bristol Rovers were the next to visit Pride Park Stadium. A breath his first 45 minutes saw six goals and a career first for experienced striker David McGoldrick. Derby's final home fixture for a little while. Can they sign on for the next month at Pride Park with a victory? This is the place to find out. And the visitors get us underway. to deliver this free kick. Derby already two goals to the good. It's in by Howrahan, it's toward Cashin. Now it's McGoldrick! What a start for Derby this afternoon! Three goals in the opening 23 minutes, and David McGoldrick has helped himself to a second. There's the free kick, it's back across goal. The Goldrick off the line, but it's Cameron in on the follow-up. And it's Bobby Thomas, the central defender, who gets the visitors back in the game. Still in a really positive, comfortable position. What we can't do is let them get back in with another goal. Thomas went down far too easily. Here's McGoldrick. And there's the hat-trick. Half performance from David McGoldrick. Wonderful. We got a drop from Collins. He's found Coburn. Penalty. 
Conte. Straight down the middle. It's 4-2. And there's the half-time whistle. Running at Corey Smith. Still Sinclair. Clawed away by Ryan Smith. Substitution for the Rams, please put your hands together. He's saving the goal trick. He was going to make way. A standing ovation for the man who turns 35 next month. And this afternoon, scored his first career hat trick. And he did it in black and white. Terrific performance. There is the full time whistle. And Paul Warren has his first Pride Park victory. It is an unbelievable feeling when your team win at home uh, and you can go around and congratulate them all, really pleased, they're pleased that you're pleased. It's a nice thing and it's, it's like quite irreplaceable in life. So, uh, yeah, so when the final whistle finally went, uh, it felt good. Perfect as a striker, win and scoring, uh, scoring hatch as well, uh, means a lot. But yeah, just happy. We, we needed to get a win and um, I'm, I'm happy I contributed and got that win. Jackers want to score, you know, everyone wants to retire and say they scored a hat-trick and no different. So I've scored loads of braces and I'm, I've scored a brace before and hit the post and never thought it was going to come. Um, but today, yeah, just scored in the first half as well. Uh, with my kids here, you know, it's a great feeling.